this 48, I'm in Naples, Italy's third largest city and the unofficial capital of its sound. This once glittering regional capital is now a victim of such endemic corruption that it frequently finds itself buried under its own rubbish. But on this 48, we hear beautiful music coming from that junk. And as lemon farmers struggle, we meet the man who refuses to abandon his beloved fruit. And we investigate the ancient fertility dance that's been exciting Neapolitans for 2,000 years. Many of Naples' problems are attributed to the Camorra, a powerful local mafia with such an extensive network that most Italians say it's difficult, if not impossible, to beat. But some people here disagree. Ciao! Ciao, Nanda! <laughs> Welcome to Naples! Thank you! Now, where are we? We are right in the middle of the city. The street is called Spacca Napoli, which mm. means that it splits Naples into uh, two different parts. Like a good side and a bad side? No, it's just <laughs> right in the middle. And like all of Naples, it's firmly controlled by the Camorra. When you live here, you cannot avoid it. Right. You live together with it. You know that most of these shops pay Camorra for protection. Right. It all contributes to the Camorra's 12 billion euro turnover, with profits flowing through 7,000 members to around 80 controlling clans. Look at this. Son of a boss, because Lichard is a boss, Camorra boss, was injured yesterday. One there's people a lot of violence here as well, and it's getting worse, they say, here in Naples. It depends on uh, families. Yeah. If they fight to control the territory, then there are more people killed or injured. The area of Sanita is peaceful now. The Lo Russo clan currently run this original Camorra area. And we've come to see how teenagers are educated about organized crime. A serious career option in a city with 28% youth unemployment. Sanguetta si sposa Agnesina. Vediamo dopo che succede. Dopo. <laughs> Written in the 1930s, the paper gangster is a story of a man who pretends to be a Camorra boss. She takes also um, the human uh, girl, his wife. So, this kind of thing really happens too, doesn't it? Yeah. Thank you, my mother. So I'm a person who can be out, and my dad can't be seen. Does this change their opinion at all of Kamara? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> If you are involved in Camorra, then you can't get out of it. It can't be respected by people by using your strength or violence. You must... You learned this in the play? So, yeah. Luckily, the fight against the Camorra isn't left entirely to the theatre community. Someone had overstretched themselves. <laughs> Copy! <laughs> they look more dangerous than they come on. <laughs> Naples Port is one of Italy's busiest and a magnet for organised crime. <laughs> Andrea had been hard at work arranging for us to visit the branch of the army responsible, the Guardia di Finanza. Buongiorno. And they were clearly expecting us. We have almost 700 containers to monitor. 700 cargoes only today, unloaded. Pakistan, Bangladesh. From China, Bangladesh. Every year, 200,000 cargoes coming in. And they have had a reputation for letting in anything. Fake designer fashion, illegal cigarettes and hard drugs. We had a, a best-selling book written about it by the journalist Saviano, is that right? Uh, Gamora. 
mean, he claimed that, you know, that, that this place was basically controlled by the Camorra. Some of these books have been considered journalistic. That is not. Maybe that is the mistake. I mean, that is fiction. Fiction, he says, because they're checking 30% of all containers as part of a new crime-fighting plan. But he couldn't talk about that. So you've got three degrees, yeah? Even how clever he is was a matter of national security. We don't need to talk about that? No. No. We can't talk about the strategies here, but what we can tell people is why you're good at your job. Yeah? And it's his move next as he intercepts fake goods his opponents import people to make the fakes in local sweatshops. There's so much we can't talk about! But he couldn't tell us that. Another seemingly insolvable problem for Naples is rubbish. There is no doubt that, that Naples stinks. It's often buried under its own waste because city dumps are overflowing. One solution was to bring the rubbish to the edge of town, as a local eco-activist showed us. And these were illegal dumps? This is not illegal. Complicating matters are the Camorra, who offer businesses ultra-cheap toxic waste disposal by just dumping it here. Why is the sky grey? Because during the night, Camorra, all the night long, burns tons and tons of toxic waste. Like deadly asbestos. Cannot use your mouth. Breathe with your nose. Yeah, let's just talk about it, because I had a minor heart attack just then. Okay, <laughs> so what we just went past was, was asbestos. Quando brucia, okay. esce fuori la mia. That is dangerous when a fire is up, because it is in the air. Yeah. And look, there are farms here, peaches. So they're growing peaches yeah. next to this industrial waste. So proposals for new waste sites lead to this. No one will risk dumps, legal or not, anywhere near them. of watching their people die of cancer. One band of brave activists is taking their anger out on the rubbish. This is the washing machine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now for Romeo. So all of this you found at a dump? This is a good way to recycle, yeah? yeah. But most Italians don't recycle, do they? Noi abbiamo molta sfiducia perché non Italians maybe do recycle, but the companies that should recycle plastic and all that stuff maybe do not do that. I saw your neighbors watching you and mm -hmm. there's a sort of curiosity, but are you having any effect, do you think? Molte persone cominciano a youngsters who were like directly or indirectly involved in criminality started to play with them and so they uh, gave up with that life. What did you think? It's a beautiful thing. She likes that. She thought that was beautiful? Is the garbage crisis over as far as she's concerned? Do you think the crisis is No. They are risking their necks, openly criticizing the Camorra. And that night, we headed into another mafia-controlled district, one of the city's most dangerous, to meet a 12-year-old who was armed with a microphone. Fortuna! Fortuna's a famous child singer. She sings in the neo-melodic style, a pretty cheesy genre that's most popular for family celebrations like this little lady's birthday. They sing in their local Neapolitan language rather than Italian, in a sort of nasal style. And in poor areas like Forcella, they're worshipped more than pop stars.
Sí, bien. She liked very much uh, this uh, this way was um, she know that this is a good career. Me encantaba de cuando yo cinco años y fue. She started to sing at five and then she do the first CD at eight. Nia Melolics often sing of love and other interesting habits. Some artists have been linked to the Camorra, seeing their political messages. But not for Tuna, she condemns the guns and drugs lifestyle of mobsters. Tuna's not from this area, is she? And a lot of the children here are quite disadvantaged. I desideri ne sono tanti nella vita. She brought about desires and the life and dreams of the babies. And it was time again for Fortuna to kiss all her babies goodbye. <laughs> she had another party to get to. Day two and I was in trouble for so far failing to mention Naples' most famous gift to the world, pizza. So Ilaria had brought me to meet a master of the pizza arts. That was beautiful. <laughs> so what pizza are we making today? La classica margherita prima. Well, first we do a classical margherita. It'll take these apprentices a year to join the 250 pizzaioli Enrico's already trained. Well, the secret is dope. I see, it's really soft. And they don't pin, do they? No. <laughs> it's tough because pizza making is governed by EU regulation, but these guys are plenty motivated. Tell me how difficult some of their backgrounds are. They are all good guys, but they don't know how to go on with the school. Some parents in prisons. Uh, these guys could, could be a good chance to don't stay in the street and don't is involved in the system. What was Giuseppe doing before this? What have you done before to do this? Nothing. It was do nothing before. He was unemployed before. Yeah. Emanuele has wanted to be a pizzaiol since he was a boy. Is it a good job here? Uh, when you start, uh, you can take about 500 uh, euro for a week. Not bad in a city where the average wage is 300 euros a week. But it's not open to everyone. The myth is that it's women can't make the dough, isn't it? It's like tradition and then nobody trusts a pizzaiola, a pizzaiola woman. 60 seconds later, the 400-degree oven had cooked the men's masterpiece. Have you ever eaten Pizza Hut or Domino's? Fast food. Feeling crispy, you know. Crispy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, Italian cuisine does extend beyond pizza, so they have a lot more to learn. That's really good. Tough for kids who struggled at school. Till uh, 13, we attend the school. And from 13 to 18, we do barman to his brother bar. Toughest of all is Noki. I have had so much bad Noki in my life. Do you want to know the secret? Yes. Le patate rosse. Red potatoes. So yeah. less water than the other one. Well, I'm allowed to touch now, am I? Yeah. Teaching the young chefs the secret of good gnocchi is student turned master Vittorio. How much have your life changed because of this? Quanto è cambiata la tua vita? Molto. Anzi, tanto. I am very much. Very much, yeah. I understand a little and uh, <laughs> good. So. Io dico che questa qua è. And he said, this course is the last chance you got in this town. Finally, it was time to try their work. <laughs> this is perfect. We're going to put it in the microwave. It tasted like the boy's future would be bright after all. Instead of cheese, let's say mozzarella. Next, Andrea tried to take us out of Naples. I think we're going to 
be late. And Mario will pick us there with my butt van. We were heading to the picturesque coast, where they also do their own traffic jams. No, no, la devo dire. A scena la cupa pensavo che stavamo persone a fare le fotografie. Non mi sarei mai permesso. Mi scusi. And we were late, as usual. Yeah, yes. The Amalfi Coast has been famous for its terraced agriculture since the Romans, but 65% of the farms now lie abandoned. But this man isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Why does he kiss them? Teliamo, sono la mia vita. It's his life. Really? You love your lemons? Isn't jealous? I mean, I mean his wife. Non è geloso perché è un amore speso bene. She is not jealous because it, it's a beautiful love. Luigi has farmed these groves for 40 years, but his roots go even deeper. I miei genitori, mm -hmm. his parents, made him under a lemon tree. <laughs> perché non potevano fare l'amore. There was just one room in their house, and there were too many people, so they had to, you know, they had to find it. <laughs> That is beautiful. He has lemon juice instead of blood in his vein. The lemons have a similar symbiotic relationship with the landscape. Sole e acqua. Sun and water. Il sole penetra sotto le radici dei limoni. The sun enters through the walls because there are small holes, so the roots can get it. So Luigi is saying the sun heats the walls, which heats the roots. Mm -hmm. Very clever. Sora. Other farmers are leaving because lemons like these cost around one euro per kilo to produce. But often sell for as little as 35 cents. Luigi Jr. is one of the very few young people joining the industry. Listening to Luigi, the farmer here, talk about his lemons is incredibly romantic. Does he think he's got the same passion? Was he made under a lemon tree, in other words? Yeah? Luigi only survives thanks to his lemon empire. He owns his own shop, sells directly to ice cream producers, and turns the rest into a local liqueur, limoncello. All'amore. Many people will like to, to work here, but they wouldn't earn that much money. Mm. So it's not enough. Mm. You must love this. Can I try his lemon? <gasps> Even though Luigi makes lemons pay, the future of his beloved trees is in doubt. I've never tasted lemon like this, never. Once never. he's gone, his family will be tempted to use the land to grow the current cash crop of choice, luxury hotels. How much longer can he honestly Quanto work tempo here? ancora pensi che puoi lavorare qua? Io vorrei lavorare sempre. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Quella che vuole Ant until God wants. Yeah. Io vorrei essere sempre. Who like to be buried under a lemon tree where he was born. <laughs> oh. Almost as old as the terraces is a Tamariata festival where I was heading with Alaria and Andrea. And they were getting in the mood. For at least 2,000 years, local farmers have made offerings for a good harvest. And since the advent of Christianity, the festival is in honor of the Virgin Mary. of the fields, the music, and, you know, the harvest. The Tamariata is an ancient courtship dance and closely linked to the Tarantella folk dance featured in films like The Godfather. In the past, the women don't go around the lawn, so just in the fields they met the men, and then there they dance, dance and meet each other. But I like it. 
Good luck, Rachel. Chocolate. Who's the dancer? You're a dancer. How long will she be dancing for tonight? She said something like, oh my god. songs may seem like a call to prayer, perhaps a remnant of the 9th century Arab domination of the area. The singing style was continued by prisoners trying to communicate with their loved ones. One instrument sounded almost Aboriginal, but this Aussie was feeling slightly intimidated by the dance floor. You should dance with Luca. No, 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 no. Luckily, Luca was an excellent trainer. A lot of fun. Really? Still really? Fun. Yeah. What do you want people to remember about Naples? The happiness of this city. You, Lauren? And me, uh, for me, the music is very important. So for me, I'm very happy to finish with music, with Tamburiata. Ragazzi, fate la musica!